Okay, so something that I just realized that I also wanted to talk about as I was going through the electron transport chain before I talk about the Q cycle is um, in last week's discussion, I mentioned to you guys that um, we, we say that NADH, so if I could scroll down here and start writing. So we said that NADH, okay, we said that NADH is roughly equivalent to 2.5 ATP. And we said that FADH2 was worth 1.5 ATP. And uh, I told you guys I would talk about it this week, why NADH is worth 2.5, why FADH2 is worth 1.5. And it comes from the electron transport chain and where NADH and FADH2 are located. So I want you guys to look at the electron transport chain. And I want you to look at where NADH is and where FADH2 is. I know you can't really see FADH2 is kind of scribbled in there on complex two, but notice, I want you guys to think about it. How many protons are we gonna be pumping into the IMS from NADH versus how many protons are we gonna be pumping uh, from complex two or from FADH2? So if you look at complex one, well, if we go from NADH, we're gonna go through complex one, so we're gonna get these protons, we're going to get, we're going to go from complex one, coenzyme Q is going to accept those electrons, then we're going to go to complex three with the Q cycle, and we're going to get four protons over there, then we're going to go to site C, and then cytochrome C is going to pass to complex four, and we're going to get another two protons over there. Um, so overall, we're going to get 10 protons that are translocated with NADH. Okay, so we got 10 H plus over here. Now, if we look at FADH2, let's see how many protons we're gonna be pumping through uh, FADH2. So succinate is gonna be oxidized to fumarate, and we're gonna get those electrons into FADH2 in complex two. And then, again, remember, co coenzyme Q accepts, uh, it's a mobile electron carrier that's gonna accept electrons from both complex one and two, so it's gonna take those electrons from complex two, and it's gonna pass them to complex three. So actually, the first place where we're gonna get uh, uh, protons from, if we start from complex two, because we're, we're going to skip over complex one. We're going to get this one, and we're going to get complex four. So we're going to only get three and four. So in total, we're only going to pump six protons. So this is 10 protons pumped into IMS, and then this is six protons pumped into IMS. Now, um, what we say, and this is just an experimental average, is that um, the number of protons required on average uh, to make an ATP is going to be four, okay? This is just something which it requires more detail on how the uh, ATP synthase works, but the idea here is that you have um, different, like, uh, kind of like rod-shaped things inside of this, and you, you, you're kind of basically putting the protons in here, and um, the more... Uh, complexes it has, the more protons you're going to need. And on average, it's going to need four protons so that you get one full rotation so that you can make ATP. Now, the idea here is that, okay, so we have four protons um, per ATP. And then we have over here another four, again, it's four protons per ATP. So if we do six over four over here, that's going to be 1.5 ATP that we can make on average. And then if we do 10 over four, we're going to do 2.5 ATP. So this is where we get our values for uh, 2.5 and 1.5 ATP. So um, the idea here is that since NADH is further earlier along in your electron transport chain, you can pump more protons into the IMS and thereby create a larger amount. You're going to create a larger electrochemical gradient, which then ATP synthase can use to make more ATP on average. Whereas if you start from FADH2, because you're skipping over complex one, um, you're only going to be able to pump six protons and then you're going to only make 1.5 ATP on average. 